thanks so much. We have a, a caller. Caller, do you have a question for the candidates? I do have a question. The issue right now on the top of people's minds is Common Core. What would each of the uh, candidates do if it came down to get, to get rid of Common Core would also have to disentangle federal money that's attached to it? How far are they willing to go Excellent to question. get rid of Common Core? Excellent because question. Thank you. Our standards, our educational standards. Excellent. Well, right. you mentioned that in your opening statement, but Joe, why don't we start with you? Uh, start uh, with because two. I'm the one who led that okay. Common Core to make it an issue it, in Connecticut give us, today. Give us two, three minutes. There you go. On, uh, your there you go. Thank Common you very much. You got to brag a little bit when you do good work. In West Hartford, where I was a town councilor, I was on the education committee, and I've been fighting what I've called the education cartel. I termed that name years ago. Not necessarily teachers. Uh, that work, but the what I would call social engineers, the federal government, bureaucracy, state mandates, just infiltrating into our school system. So uh, the dollars follow the student uh, sometimes. Last summer, I, uh, I met some people that were moms. They call them tiger moms. I was on, when I was in the uh, running for office last April, and so it was around August that I met Jessica Chong, a mom from West Haven. And I encouraged her and worked with her and a, a, a lot of lot of moms, and we just held the first. Uh, televised, well, we, we did a live stream event of uh, Anti-Common Core in Portland, Connecticut, February 22nd. And you can go to my website, ViscontiForGovernor.com, and see the live uh, streamed uh, event against Common Core. Common Core is a standard of curriculum w which parents don't want. Mm -hmm. And in my campaign, we'll be hitting every bus stop with a one, two, three steps, how to opt out of Common Core. Okay. The uh, Common Core group has their own attorneys. And uh, what's happened is the parents understand, especially in the ages from seven and, and up, that the kids are having a hard time. Common Core does not replace your um, test, your it's mastery test, your mm -hmm. quizzes. It's another level of federal bureaucracy. It is the Obamacare of education. Mm -hmm. Parents are outraged. Republicans can take this. And I've seen every candidate pick it up since I pushed this uh, a few months ago and uh, as, a, as a leading uh, gubernatorial candidate. Because here's where we can bring women into the, into the party. Mm -hmm. Women are moms. We lost many of them with the pro-choice. But moms want their parental right. They want the parental choice to opt their children out of Common Core. And when they do, federal dollars will dry up in the state of Connecticut. And that's how you shut it down. But it's going to take... And acted, and again, Dan Malloy was wrong because Dan Malloy allowed it not, not to see the light of day in the legislature and, and pushed it right through. But I'll let everybody go on. Okay, right. thanks. I just want to, I, there's, I want, there's, uh, one, there's one other question coming on, and then we want to give you guys each a closing statement. So let's go to the lightning round. Go ahead, man. Uh, I, look, I just say that um, anytime we have a top down driven uh, policy, in this case, uh, Common Core, it's bad for. Uh, local municipalities, local boards of education that ought to be making their own decisions about what they want their kids to, to know and how they want it, uh, to learn it. Um, I also think that this state has gone into a headlong rush into implementing Common Core without understanding the unintended consequences of this and, and even the delay that's now been proposed. People don't understand that, for example, in Danbury, we've had to purchase almost a million dollars worth of software mm -hmm. to be able to do the correct reporting as dictated by the state and federal government that now we can't use. Now, that money I could have used to buy more textbooks or potentially you know, hire that extra tutor we might have need for mm -hmm. one of our children or their class or whatever. Um, so this uh, 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 diverting of resources is having a real impact on our ability to deliver core classroom instruction. Um, but there's a much bigger issue here, and I think what's really kind of frustrating people uh, for our teachers is their concern about linking their evaluation to the Common Core standard that they don't understand and they're not clear on exactly what that standard ought to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the second piece to this is the 50,000 foot level, and that is, you know, what do we really want? What do we really want coming out of our educational system? And we've developed a, a system over the last 10 years, driven by federal law and state law, that has made kids become high stake test, high stakes testing takers uh, and we've tried to school them and and drill them to do very well on all of these high stakes tests but we're forgetting that we're not building widgets kids are not widgets they're people and at the end of the 12 years the continuum of education that child coming out has to be an adult ready for the world to work ready to participate in our democracy ready to be able to fill out a job application or go to college or whatever choice that they make and our kids aren't ready for that because we've spent and eaten up so much classroom time on being able to take these tests and score at a certain level. 
there's a whole bunch of ethical, I think, dilemmas related to the act, this actual initiative, but also I think there's a much broader discussion we have to start having about what we want our kids to know. We need to engage our local uh, boards of eds, our administrators, our practitioners, our teachers, our parents, obviously, uh, and have a much broader discussion about the entire process that we've embarked on. Because I'll tell you right now, the kids walking into uh, the door at City Hall that are 22 or 23, that maybe want to be a police officer, a firefighter, might be really good at taking a test, but we have to work with them a lot on how to understand uh, the world of work, the culture of work, what's expected, uh, and they'll come around, but it's a lot of work for us as an employer, and I think we're missing the boat uh, in terms of the kind of person we're looking to turn out. Okay. Thank you. Martha? Well, first of all, I agree with most of what, I think all of what Mayor Bowden just said very uh, eloquently. Um, and, and I think that it, to take it even further, and I agree with, um, with Joe that, that parents should pull their uh, kids out of the testing. But what's going to happen is that these parents who are very angry about Common Core are going to pull their kids out of the system, they're going to pull them out of the public schools and homeschool them. And homeschooling, people who don't know about homeschooling, and I have lots of friends in the homeschooling movement, and they go from you know, inner city to suburb, they go from you know, minimally educated to highly educated. I mean, for example, George Gilder under Reagan homeschooled his own kids, his, his family, and there's a family in uh, Avon, five kids, and they lead a whole homeschooling movement in Connecticut at a very high end. They will, parents will pull their kids out, and then these school districts are gonna fold. They're gonna fold because they're expensive, they have to be supported by taxpayers. And when parents pull their kids out of the public school system, they don't need to live in expensive towns. A homeschooling family doesn't need to live in Avon. They can move to the hills of Bloomfield, which are just gorgeous, right next door, where there's a poor, uh, poorer performing school system. They can live there, pay lower taxes, not pay for a fancy school, and, and be in the same area without paying for the taxes of Avon. So these schools in, in that are excellent right now in Connecticut are going to fold because the taxpayers are going to walk. They're going to walk out of state. They're going to walk to other towns where there are lower taxes, and there won't be the tax base to pay for them. So I see this. It's not just the sucking sound of people quickly exiting the state for jobs. It's the sucking sound of parents pulling their kids out of these school systems and making other decisions because homeschooling is so much easier now. Don't think of families alone in their home you know, without anyone around. They, I, I judge Shakespeare contests for homeschoolers. Lots of families come together and I've taught them uh, uh, judge speech contests and that sort of thing. They do very sophisticated programs. The families get together and they have really well-educated kids who go on to top universities. So Mar basically across the board, Common Core is not... Yeah, but Marty, I want to, I want to make one, clear, one clarification on Common Core. Parents do not and will not take their kids out of school. They can opt out of Common Core and keep their children in the school. Yes. That's what's in the process right now. And we had a public hearing on that last week uh, because of the outrage myself and many parents brought down on Andrew Fleischman who wouldn't hold it. So you can stay in the school system okay. right now. But it's All the right. Common Core school system. Jeff, no, Jeff, no, you work. don't have to stay in the Common Core. Okay, we're in the lightning round. Jim? Just 